Welcome back, everyone. Going into the third hour here of Roleplay Swan Song. Adam, it's time to make some rolls and play okay. with them. So, so, a more elegant description of role-playing games I have never heard. <laughs> We're going to make some rolls and play with them. Does the name finally make sense, Adam, after it's 33 finally, weeks of the show? I just thought, I just, dude, I just thought you didn't oh know how to Oh, my God. Spell. Yeah. I was like, it's like the arrow in FedEx. Yep. I, I just, you know, Wait, there's an arrow in FedEx? Hold on. Hold the phone. Oh, shit. Know this? You're, you're never going to unsee. Just know that you're going to a place you can Wait, never no, come there's, back from. Come back from yeah. There's not a Fed. Where's oh, the arrow? Oh, look between look the, the look Fed between the e and, the and the X. X. Uh huh. That's it's, just the, it's the white space between the E and the X. So the 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 gap in the E and then the X makes a little point. It's an arrow. It's. Mm -hmm. I don't see it at all. Maybe I'm looking at what. If you Google FedEx God arrow, literally the first chat, image is, a, is like a up. show. It, it's like a big bright oh green. Oh my like... God, there's an arrow in <laughs> FedEx? Holy shit. Yeah. Holy year. shit. All this time. Cannot unsee. 29 years. Fed and I yeah, found it. it is. Yeah. That is an am that's fucking amazing. Those guys are so smart. Graphic design, everybody. Yeah. JP's like, I gotta get my graphics guy to look at this. Yeah, that's fucking, that's super smart. <laughs> I'm gonna make a roleplay logo with So many people it. right now like, holy shit! <laughs> and then other people like, you're an idiot, you've never yep. seen yeah. that. I've never but seen now that. you'll never not see it. So so does this mean, is it is it like FedEx, do FedEx vehicles have to have the FedEx logo only painted on one side? Because otherwise the arrow's pointing backwards. Ah, it's all about perspective. I don't know. About it would have to be on one side of the car. Anyway, whatever. FedEx. When you're looking at it, it's still pointing right, man. Oh my god, I only see the arrow now. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, ship combat occurs in, in stages. So, the captain of the ship first needs to indicate what metadimensional phase the ship will occupy and what phase you're going to shoot at. Um, all the ships can fly and shoot into real space, which is phase zero. The maximum phase into which you can fly or shoot is equal to your spike drive rating. So, you can you can basically you're you're sort of flickering between different gradients of reality. And if you uh, if you flicker into um, sp drive space three, then they're going to have to roll to shoot at you because they they have to drive down drill down as deep as they can to fire at you. But they don't know how strong the drive on your ship is. So basically, you write down what phase you want to target and what phase you want to occupy. So, I don't know, write it on a piece of paper or whatever. Because um, I, I can't know what it is uh, until we both have I've got a pen right here. So okay. Do that. And then I have a piece of paper right here. <laughs> I mean, sure, we're just revealing at the same time. Wait, wait, wait. What's my choice? Is one through three? Uh, I'll, I'll here, I'll, I'll do one. I'll count. I'll yeah, count down A, B, C. On C, you guys both enter it because if I do one, yeah. two, three, then you guys will think I'm counting the numbers. Let's do that. So when I okay. hit, when I say C, you guys both press enter. Yeah. So the thing is, we need two. We need two numbers. We need um, the one for your ship occupying and the one that your ship is shooting, shooting into. into. Easy. So first number is the occupy, second number. Yeah, I'm going to do a, a slash you, so occupy. It's like Psy games. All right, are you guys ready? Yeah. Ready. All right, A, B, C. Okay, there you go. So Wait. you're occupying three, firing into two. They're going to drop into one, and uh, so you're both firing at different, uh, different spaces. So... Uh, we show the phases simultaneously. Now, you have to determine whether you want to attempt a maneuver, which you are doing. Um, and then uh, they are going to... Um, they're not going to maneuver. They're just going to try and shoot you. So you're evading, and they're going to shoot at you. So do that other um, roll we did? Is that what you're saying? And then we fire weapons, um, and then apply damage, and then you evade on your last turn. So they'll, they'll still get that chance to shoot at you. Um, but uh, why they yeah. lift? They shot. No, no, they don't, no, no. So there, there's a there's a d6. I'll roll for each of them. We'll do that right now. So basically, what happens is if they um, if they're firing at you and you're in a different phase, uh, it requires uh, that we uh, we roll a d6. So the result is greater than the difference. This then they uh, then they can't hit you. So I don't want to say just it is horseshit, but I'm feeling. <laughs> All right, each ship smelling something. Each yeah. ship gets a three. If I get a three, a four, a five, or a six on on these dice, um, then they um, uh, then they miss. So, 
I'm looking for ones or twos. Okay, none of them can shoot at you. So this is this is the surreal thing that happens. They all fire their weapons at you, and maybe some of them would have hit the ship, but like inside the ship, there's like phantom like beams passing through the ship that you can kind of see and kind of feel, but aren't uh, do these, on the same uh, phase of reality. Do these as you. phantom beams called phantom. Do they cause? As I say, pain? when they hit you, you experience some kind of pain that oh. is also phantom like. What a menace! Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. What? What? No Phantom Menace? Okay. Yeah. So it makes it makes it hard, harder for them it. to hit you. They can't do it. Uh, in this case, so the beams cut through the ship, but don't uh, they don't hit you? So they they miss. Um, wow. Because it's uh, yeah, it's if the result is greater than the difference between phases, which is two, then they <laughs> they like just beam through you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all of you, you notice, like, just, like, these strange, like, red beams flying through the ship. Um, now, uh, Higgs, you can do the same. You can, you can fire. You need to roll a d6. Um, you'll be able to hit on, let's see, the greater than the difference between phases is just one. So you'll be able to hit on, um, uh, let's see, the difference between phases is just one for you to shoot them. Yeah, so it's yeah. Go ahead and uh, and roll. You should be able to hit um, on uh, three uh, and higher. We hit. Okay, cool. So you can make a you can make a shot at one of them with the uh, the cannon. Well, shouldn't this just kill all of me? Think. Um, How do I do that? Uh, oh, hang on. I think I might. I think I might have this backwards. I think that you both hit because if the difference was zero, you wouldn't be able to hit. Right? It's supposed to be. God, the space combat is so weird in this. And we've only done it once, and it was like a year ago. It was um, time ago. Yeah, so it's it's backwards. It's a one or a two. Um, they would miss. They they get to hit otherwise because you're not you're not that far apart. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so everybody gets to shoot at everybody. Uh, they still have to make their their rolls though. So hang on, hang on. Let me just to clarify. Yeah, they miss. Then you remember that it was the opposite, and now they're hitting <laughs> us. Yeah. But you're hitting too. You don't all miss. I realized it was a miss because it got worse because you were you rolled better than them. Yeah, Swan Song misses on a one. They miss on a one or two. I actually rolled really well. Sorry. All right. So sorry. They get to. Don't, don't be uh, sorry. Just kill all of us, Adam. It's fine. Shh. Quiet, Jeff. <laughs> Just shut up. I'm trying to concentrate. Um. Okay. So they have a uh, two bonus to hit. Um, and I gotta just check the armor class. On the ship. <laughs> That's giggling about over there. No, there's an arrow also in the in, what is that? The Arabian <laughs> FedEx logo. There's also one too. <laughs> All right, combat gunner is the applicable skill. Intelligence the relevant attribute. Um, and to hit you, I. I just love how complicated this is. It's like let's take ship to ship combat. Yeah. But like while they were doing these rules, they were high. It oh, it's because it's it's two d six. That's why I was looking for an armor class, but it's it's just skill checks. They're just fucking okay. gone. So I just need to make three skill checks. So one hit. Come on, dice, you can do it. Okay, so the ship gets two two hits. And they deal 2d4 damage a piece. Minus two. Yeah. So the ship takes uh, four, six damage. Six damage. So we're yeah. at seven? Let me look no, at we that. Took six and five. We're at nine. Uh, we took another five earlier? Yeah. No. It was five instead of seven. I thought we were at Oh, 13. yeah, okay. So, yeah, we were oh. at 15, and then minus oh. minus six. Is that six minus two, or six total? No, it's six. So we're at six total. Okay, so, yeah, that, that puts us down to nine. Yep, Jeff was right. Jeff is the man. Well, thank okay. you. All right, so uh, now you, uh, somebody with gunner. Him? Yeah. What, uh, what am I rolling now? So you roll your gunnery. Um, so roll your, your 2d6 for gunnery. Combat gunnery? Yeah. Yeah. What does that attribute? Dex? Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So the ship the ship does have that's funny. The ship does have they do have AC. Um Yes. But our AC is six. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't see it on the table that I'm looking at, but it's listed in a 
weird place. It has armor and AC. Okay. Um, do you guys want me to re-roll the attack rolls then? Because it's more like it's more likely you won't get hit in this case. Because your ship has pretty decent. You know what, Adam? I'll allow it. Let's go for that. Let's <laughs> okay. go for the one where it's we'll less look. likely we get hit. I think we'll allow that. Okay, we'll re-roll the whole thing. I well, think it's other, right. otherwise, otherwise, we can just play the round out with the same rules for you and then switch it for the next round. But I can, I can re-roll it. Um, okay, so it's a two, and you have an AC of six, you said? Yes. Okay. So, so it's D20 plus eight, then. Plus eight, yeah. So it's maybe not that much worse, but we'll see. What? Watch you get hit three times this time. Okay, there's one. Damn. Yeah, it's totally got to be okay. better, guys. Yeah, one one hit. Instead. Oh, we got hit once. It says oh, twice. that is better. Okay, all right. Well, depending on this roll, then he rolls like a fucking thirty or something like that. Okay, so you take five damage. We act instead so of we are six. one <laughs> instead of six. Better. Oh, that we did oh, it, guys. Wow. All right. So now, now you get yeah. to fire. You're firing what at the same that? time, so you can go ahead and uh, and make your roll. So it's a d20 plus your intelligence. Uh, plus your gunnery skill. Um, and oh, this is intelligence plus my gunnery skill, yeah. which is a negative one. So that equals assisted but of the zero. the sand thrower is supposed to be, like, really good, right? The sand thrower will deal double damage if you hit. That's it? What's their armor class that we get to add, then? Uh, four. Three C's four. It's cause Wait, smart. so I'm rolling a skill check to see if I can roll No, you're not, rolling, you're not rolling a skill check. Just roll a D, D20 plus four plus your whatever your... Intelligence well, my, and then gunnery, which is minus one. So I th I'm thinking it's a plus three, right? D20 plus three? My end, yeah, yeah, D20 plus three. Okay. Yeah. 21? Ah! <laughs> okay, so you roll. Take you that, roll Adam! Double damage for the flat cannon. And what's the damage? 4d4. Oh, 4 d flat cannon, four, flat cannon is 2d4, so double damage is 4d4. Yeah, or do you want 2d4 d blood times, times 2? Just do, just roll 2d4 times 2, and then I'll subtract the. Um, How do you do times two? Uh, use your head. Asterisk two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> use your head. head. Yeah, it's it's asterisk. Four two. Holy crap. That's square root. Wait, what? Damage. Yeah, it's yeah. Four oh no, that's three. right. Yeah, no, that's how. That's, <laughs> <right. laughs> that's fucking square. <laughs> Don't math on stream, JP. <laughs> All right, so they have uh, they have eight hit points. I just um, saw three, and I'm like, how the fuck could that be? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, okay, so they have eight, eight hit points, and so one of the ships, before Jeff gets to make his uh, uh, maneuver roll for Alpharius, uh, one of the ships cuts around, um, fires, this is the one that hits you, so they fire, the ship shakes as the as the beam, the reaper beam, hits the back of the ship. Uh, your uh, sand thrower spins around, pew, fires, and we just see like a cloud of, uh, of sparkling sort of particles fly out behind the ship. The fighter goes right through it and just comes out on the other side like a cloud of fire. Like it just poof, gets awesome. straight. Yeah. Um, and, it's like uh, that yeah, scene in just, Gravity. It's a, yeah, it just gets totally Ooh. shredded by tiny little balls of, uh, of silica, like crystal. Um, so now the other two come howling in behind you, and you can, um, uh, you can make your, uh, your evade roll uh, there. Is that the normal number one? Uh, yeah, this is 2d6 plus the speed of your ship. Um, it's, it's plus 7. Yeah, er, same, as, same as you rolled before. Yeah, plus 7. I just have to beat you. You're getting a plus 6, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, God. The swings. Swing low, sweet Adam Cobal. There you yeah! Go. <laughs> God, I'm so good at rolling dice. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Okay. All right. So you, uh, yeah, the ship gets hit, uh, it jars, the damage indicators start flashing, you blow up that ship behind you, the other two pull in, and uh, at, the, at the sort of last second you manage to, uh, to jet ahead uh, away from them, and they, they fall behind and, uh, and can't keep up. So when you successfully get the, um, uh, oh, technically, yeah, it was only plus six, but you beat me by enough that it doesn't matter. Because you didn't have help, you didn't have help on that one? Because JP was firing the guns, but it doesn't. He always have doesn't. help. I, I mean, I would have helped if I was asked you to help. Well, you can't do. You can't do Arrogant both. You can't hold farts. Uh, you know. Can't just... shoot the. You can't shoot the the guns uh, and uh, do that. To be honest, he helped out so great the time before that I can just feel the effects of it still. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you. Um, 
you escape. And uh, let me just double check. There's anything else you need to do. Who did that? I don't know someone. Like, right someone there. in chat. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. These guys are so good. Successfully evaded the enemy. Okay. So you, yeah, you get away. So you manage to uh, to get free and then whew, head on your way. Um. So. I guess it's whatever a, a couple of hours later, um, and I think maybe Desoto is starting to wake up as you approach the edge of uh, of the the sector. Um, I'm going to sw switch us over to this sector map so we can see what's up. The star map. All right, so you're reaching the edge of the Vafai uh, system, and um, yeah, what? Uh, who is there? Anybody with Desoto when he wakes up? I think I'd be back there. I'm standing over him in a white smock, and I apologize if we replace his heart with a baked uh, potato, and he has three <laughs> seconds to live. <laughs> the South Park. I am, I am a I potato. Thank you. Okay, so he's waking. He's waking up, um, and he seems like groggy and confused, and he's like restrained, right? Because you were moving through space real quick, um, and he starts to sort of groan in pain. Well, I think bef maybe before that even happens, we have like a meeting and sure you want to talk about it first okay yeah, yeah i think we just i proposed to the group and it's like i think you just tell him the truth except the part where i killed his bodyguard and it's we had to very him. reasonable that he died in the accident truck. yeah no i made it look like and we can even go investigate i'm sure the corpse is smelly and stuff down there and we'll say like your bodyguard's dead he took a uh he got a bad case of the metal to the neck and he couldn't live <laughs> Intense case of steel poisoning. Yeah. Do do we intend to hide from Mr. DeSoto that we're taking him somewhere else other than his destination? I don't think we tell him where we're taking him unless he asks, and then if he does, yes, then we'll probably <coughs> lie. Okay. It's the mission. You just got it. You got to follow the mission, Eric. Uh, Eric looks over his character sheet to see where he's supposed to be pretending to be from. S the Viking S world. Sadid or sis. Of Ed or... uh, I don't from... remember where I'm supposed to be pretending to be from. <laughs> it's... Well, you were. I think that yeah. I think there was some confusion about where you were pretending to be from. I think or we were. That... We were pretending. We. I was. I was from Sigrid. I was a Sigridian ambassador, but yeah. we were going to somewhere else, and I have no idea where the. We were faking, taking him to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I just we will. Say that sedative is probably the best thing for him, and then we just keep him sedated until we get there. Easy to, easy peasy. We just deliver him that way. Okay. All right, great. And then now we fast forward to the waking him up. Sure, okay. And I would assume that Eric does the talking. Cause that's I remember he, he doesn't his... like me at all, so I just I try to, like, I actively try to stay away from him. Yeah, I mean, I would think that he, he trusted Eric as the point of contact for the group, so Eric should be the one talking to him. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do? So he's yeah he's waking up and anybody who's in the room. Uh, is, is Are we to... like all gonna be there or is it just Eric? I think that might maybe be a it's just weird. Eric. Is there? I mean, I'm we not... we can have like the cam on so that y'all can be watching and. Yeah, I would think that me yeah, and Alfarius I have an earpiece in and y'all can like talk to me too. Yeah, me and Alfarius aren't there, and I guess yep. Piani's not there either. Yeah. Yeah. So you know I. I sort of like, you know, he's all like strapped in and, and stuff. And I, I just sort of like put my hand on his shoulder and I say, Mr. DeSoto, how are you feeling? I kind of like blanks and you can see like he's had enough time now that like the, the bruises from the crash are starting to sort of blossom. Yeah. Um, and uh, and he uh, is he still he's still restrained. Yeah. OK. Uh, I think that's the first thing that he tries to like. He kind of like tries to he's like. Don't why don't am I hurt being... yourself? What happened? Where are we? We are en route to Strophios. Don't exert yourself too badly. You were badly injured in the car accident. I remember. The... He kind of like looks up at you, and, and it's just it's just you and him in the room. Mm -hmm. He's like, "What happened to that cyborg?" Oh. Well, his arm was severely damaged. We had him treated in a separate medical facility, and now we have him locked away. 
What? We, we are trying to make you as comfortable as possible for your trip, Mr. DeSoto. But what happened? Why? I, I'm confused. I, God, my head hurts. This. Is why? there pain? Do you need morphine? Uh, and he, he shakes his head. He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. We were let, attacked let, by let the me up. initiative. And he's like trying to, he's trying to get up. Not like hard, but he's like, yeah, like, let me get up. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, go I, ahead. I, I'm, I'm just like calming him down. I'm like, please, please don't, don't strain yourself too hard. We can unstrap you now. We had some, um, dog fighting on the way out of the atmosphere. We were pursued by members of the Purity Initiative, and I just start undoing the, the straps and saying, okay. you know, but so we, have, we have exited the, the danger. He sits up, and um, he starts, like, buttoning his shirt up, even though it's, like, all bloody and stuff. Like, he's, like, buttoning his shirt up, and he kind of, like, pats himself down, like, see what he has on him. Mm -hmm. um, and he, uh, he looks at him and uh, you, and he's like, um, where is Ichiro? What happened to him? It's not good news, Mr. DeSoto. The car accident was severe. Fine. We, we have his body in cold storage, so we can treat him with the proper respect. Maybe it goes back over into me and Alfarius, and we look at each other. We should probably put it in cold storage in case he wants to see the body. <laughs> <laughs> So fantastically um, timely idea. <laughs> he says, um, "I don't, um, I, I don't understand. What was this cyborg waiting to kill me? Was he hiding in your crew? What, what was he doing here?" Oh, 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 no, no, Mister Desoto, you can actually review the video footage from the ship. The the cyborg, Im impure though he may be, he was actually very instrumental in securing our our safety he's it's kind he of scowls is he is constrained away from away from your quarters here but he he was critical for our survival uh, and I, I just sort of like lift up my shirt and i show where i've got those two like cauterized scars and i say in fact i would not be here if it were not for him huh well I don't know that saving your life justifies his, but I suppose I'm glad for that. And he like puts his hand on your shoulder and he, he tries to be like, all right, good man. Like we're okay. But he like, you can tell yeah. he's like super weak and he kind of like stumbles a little and you have to end up kind of holding him up. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, he shakes his head and uh, he says, I just, I just need to rest. I'm just going to put my head down for a moment. Yes. And he kind of like lays back down. Mr. Dies. Soto, can I can I bring you anything? He um he shakes his head and uh, he's like um I need you to wake me up when we get to Strovian airspace. You're going to need authorization, my codes. Yes, yes, of course. I'll be certain to come alert you. Good. Good. The profits security is very tight. We won't get through with. And you can see him kind of like drifting a little bit. Mm. And then eventually he just stops talking and you can see his chest rising and falling in a slow pattern. And he's sort of falling asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I exit the room and then I, I, I go on the comms to the the crew. Um, and I say, did were you listening, Piani Higgins? Uh, no, I was finding a lighter for this cigar. What? How's it going? Uh, well... It seems that Mr. DeSoto has a set of access codes that could grant us access into Strophios airspace. It's possible it would be, um, hmm, economically viable for us to <laughs> extract these codes from him for future use or perhaps for resale. Yeah, yeah, no, steal them, steal them. Yeah. Uh, okay, then I suppose in a, in a few days or maybe a week, I will inform him that we are approaching Strophios airspace and, and that we need him to provide us the codes. Yep. Could we... <coughs> Piani? Yes? Do you think we could somehow set up a falsified Strophios airspace check so that Mr. DeSoto could interface with our computer systems, believing that he is in, inputting the codes into Strophian airspace when in fact... He's simply putting them into our computer? Of course. 
In fact, it's a fucking great idea. Look Thank at all this you. praise. <laughs> I will go to my room now. <laughs> Maybe well, I just go over to speaker to be on I'm just like, you know, Eric wants to fuck you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. I fucking I ignore it. <laughs> I just ignore it. Maybe maybe I look maybe I uncheck and I look towards Alfie and I'm like, that's how you get him right there, Alfie. You take you remember that. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. Do you want to make a do you want to make a navigation uh, test for me, uh, Higgs? Uh, yeah, I'll fail that for you. Okay. Remember, you have the navigation computer. So. Oh, that's right. It, this is based uh, what, off int. What route? Yeah, what route do you want to take? Uh, we are going to which system? You are going to uh, the going Ge to... Geoxy system. You're in a 706. You can jump three uh, hexes in a single jump. Well, I think we go through Stasi. Then we'll just go direct. Okay. Go to Stasi, uh, refuel there, and then jump to 706. Yep. Okay. Let me get the navigation table here. Um. Okay, so uh, your uh, your test is navigation, uh, your navigation skill plus your intelligence plus what is it two for your computer? Is it is it two? Um, it's two, I man! So. I can't it's believe two. I forgot that it's two. That's amazing. I, Ten. <laughs> hold on, I wasn't done. <laughs> um, but uh, now you y'all didn't buy new star charts, right? And it's January. Yeah, now. sure, sure. Did. So. Um, I'm just going to double check the computer. I th it's either two or three. I think it's probably two, but let me double check. Unless you have it written down already. That Yeah, I've got it written down, Adam. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, I wrote it down. You are all such assholes today. Um, Whoa! It is, it is a plus two. It's totally a plus two. The phantom pain, Adam. Think about it. <laughs> I like how... I like how at one point, Higgs was over here and JP was over here, and they're just slowly yes. moving closer <laughs> yes. together. Like, it's not just like your character's becoming more like you. I think you are becoming a little more and more Higgs every time we play. Yep. I am the FedEx right. arrow of this show. Uh, yeah, so you, you did you did buy them, and it is the plus two, so you get your you get your ten. Okay. Um, so that, uh, that'll jump you <laughs> to the Stasi system, uh, where you can pay to refuel. Um... And then make one more jump from Stasi to Geoxy. And that takes, uh, what, six days to jump three, and then another two days. So, All right, here's the roll. Eight. Okay. Um, I don't like how it's red, even though I succeeded. That's it, so it, it gives you a red die well, if you... Because it's a one. You rolled a one, yeah, yeah. But you did succeed, so that's another two. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it, it is February now. Um, and it is the 28th, 30th, February 6th, 6th of February, 3201. Okay, so you arrive in system February 6th, and um, when you do, when you end up in Geoxy, when you jump into that, uh, into that system, um, you, uh, yeah, you get, um, you get two, two or three messages, I guess three messages from um uh from Rajani. Uh the first message is dated from partway through your trip from Vafai to Stasi. Uh and it says, um it's just like uh from Rajani Van Dorn, uh just a text uh email that basically just says, um just checking in on the progress. Do you have the package? ETA? Question mark. Um, yeah, I just respond yes, and then give her the ETA, whatever that is. Okay, yeah, yeah, your assumed date. Okay, so then you get another message from her when you leave, I guess when you get to Geoxy, and that one was from two days ago, and the message says, um, it just says WTF in the subject line, and there's a link to a news post, a, a Galactic News Network post, that basically, like the headline. I don't know. You're gonna you're gonna open it. You're gonna like watch it. Yeah, of course. Like a video. Okay. I'm all so jazzed a, to watch this. I even get another yeah. cigar. So it's it's um, it's like uh, terrorist forces kidnap purity initiative exemplar, 
and so there's a woman. Um, the news is that it's the the GNN new, uh, video is in Japanese, but the computer will auto translate for you based on the news network. So you have like your preferred language that so translates it into English for you. But basically, she's like, um, you know, in uh, in Galactic News today, a uh, a band of armed terrorists killed twelve people and kidnapped. Uh, exemplar DeSoto, and it like brings up like a stock photo of him like at a party, like you know schmoozing with a bunch of really attractive people, um, and then it's like uh, this ship last seen in the it gives you the name of the city and shows the swan song like sort of blurry camera of the swan song. Do they and catch the, like, the Higgs angle? <laughs> uh, make, a, make, make a luck check. Oh shit! Am I lucky I, if they do, or I don't know? I'm, I was gonna make you. I was gonna make you do the role and then just ask you which one you want. <laughs> That's a success. Okay, so you succeeded. So is it luckier if they did or they didn't? Maybe I see it in the live right. footage, but sure, they don't. It's like a see magic it. eye, you know, yeah. to like squint. It's like I. Eyes. I don't see the arrow for the first time, but once I know, I can never unsee it. Right? That's the Higgins <laughs> right. thing. Okay. All right. So Higgs, yeah, you watch it and you like cross your eyes, you can see the thing, but no one else would be able to. So it says, um, yeah, this this ship um, registered as the Swan Song. Um, is the last time that anyone saw uh, Exemplar de Soto. And then it brings up, um, again, like shots of uh, you, like the, the four of you, um, basically like stills from you running around. They're a little blurry, but you'd re you recognize yourselves and the, and the crew. Um, I and sense the a government cover-up, though, because they didn't count the fighter ship that we killed in this news report, Adam. Yeah, well, they don't want to show that they tried to chase you down and failed. <laughs> um... So at the um, yeah, and at the end, she basically just says that um, the Purity Initiative is offering a bounty of a hundred thousand credits to anyone who can provide uh, arrestable information on the Swan Song or its crew or the location of Exemplar De Soto. Um, Mr. Higgins, that sounds pretty good. We should take that. Yeah, you think I stole or made a clock or something? What's going on here? This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> uh, such a political show we're on. Very political. <laughs> Very in tune with society. One yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, no, it's fine because Higgs is white. Um, so exactly. the, um, the, it ends with like a, a, an addendum of the, um, the like uh, an, uh, an additional news article that's like a, a statement of support for Exemplar de Soto. And it's like, um, uh, another newscaster for the GNN who's like, we're on scene today on Strophios, and there's that that demagogue we saw before um, at his like pulpit, uh, and he's saying um, uh, he's saying like uh, you know uh, the new prophet will not stand for terrorism in our sector, and the kidnapping of Exemplar De Soto is unacceptable, and so he's like basically just like shouting about how like this cannot stand and that we will we will use every resource we can to like hunt down these fiends and bring them to justice um if not just for us but for for our allies in the purity initiative um and uh yeah and so rajani's message was just like what the actual fuck guys um and yeah and so then you you appear in uh, in the Gyaxi system and you have you have the package great i think we go to where it's delivered Okay, or where we're supposed to um, deliver it. At some point, we gotta do the the, the bait and swisheroo with mm -hmm. uh, Mister Desoto here. So I guess I guess at some point, like uh, uh, Piani has been preparing the falsified docking information so that we can just get him to punch in the information. Like I guess, like first thing I'm gonna do is like I'll go to him, I'll wake him up, be like, hey, you know, we're about to dock Astrophios. Do you want to give me the information? And if he's like, no, no, I'll put it in, then we'll go to fallback plan B. Beautiful. Okay, so let's 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 do that. So what are you what are you doing to prepare? So uh, what I was gonna do is I was gonna create basically exactly like what you would expect if you clicked on a phishing email and went to a fake website. So right, that. Right. I'm just I'm just like prepping w, a w, w dot battle dot newt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, and then I'm just going to use the compad to kind of like, you know, and have air and and present it to Eric to use, uh, on Desoto. Okay, can you make a culture? I mean, I assume you don't have culture strophia, so maybe culture criminal. Sure. I think Wheat leveled that up last. 
time, right? Yeah. We leveled? We all did, actually. Yeah. What, yeah, you, keep, you keep this up, Jeff, and I'm not going to take anything you say seriously. <laughs> Damn it. Like, yeah, I don't think I'll I'll come come Jeff tell got in Jamie trouble there. And I didn't get, this is totally I Higgs. I've become Higgs incarnate. This is awesome. <laughs> I don't think I. I don't think I did. Yeah, you're full of shit. I actually was double checking. Wait, you after. checked? Shut and up. when you gaze into the abyss, the abyss also. Oh gazes my god, into you guys! Why would we ever level up Strophios? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, culture criminal, you oh, jackass! Oh, oh, oh I. Oh. That's what you meant, though, JP. I get it. Yeah, ah, we did it. Trolls. We did it. Oh, yeah. So good. Eight. So I got an eight. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think based on the, the like, general smuggling knowledge that you have and that kind of thing, you, you know, you've, you've kind of figured out a, a, a reasonable facsimile. Um, so these kinds of things, if it's a person, it's usually um, a bioscan. So, like, um, like a thumbprint or a retinal scan, something like that. Equipment you just have on board. Um, yeah, equipment we can totally use to create a facsimile that we can falsely feed to Strophios later. Um, I mean, considering that the person with the codes has been, just been kidnapped, there's a chance the codes might not be valid anymore, but, well, I mean, yeah, you could totally do that later. It's fine. Okay, good. Fine. Go straight right, to Strophios so right now. Do it. Yeah, it's that's good. <laughs> um, but, yes, you can you can rig up a uh, like a retinal scanner, um, and then there's also like a voice print recognition uh, that goes with it. Cool. Um, with like a passcode, um, so you've you've put together uh, something that you think could uh, could probably fool him, um, and then who's who's actually doing the like who's going through this process with him? Eric, Eric, for yeah, sure, it'd yeah. be me. Okay, all right, Eric. So you've got the like the pad, uh, the like data pad, and the the retinal scanner with you, mm-hmm. um, and he's. Like he's he's fine. He's had some time to recover, but is is I don't know. Are you keeping him like intentionally sedated? Uh, like I think probably like, I, are you gonna make me give him make a medic roll for that? Fucking no, I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Can I help uh, him with my? Um, is there a uh, risk of him work. dying? There's a risk of bad stuff happening. Sure. I don't think like the auto dock will not allow you to kill him unless you intentionally override the auto dock. Right. But yeah. but the auto dock does need a person to keep like the. The amount of morphine. It won't. It's not a doctor. It's just a machine. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep him a little bit. Okay. Make a. I'm not a doctor, doctor, man. I'm a machine. Make a tech medical uh, s- uh skill check, and you can take a plus one for the auto doc helping you. Cool. So tech medical based off of what stat? Intelligence. Please. Oh yeah, that's a total of plus one. So yeah, tech medical. So my attribute is int submit assisted plus one. Oh yeah! Nice. You so didn't kill him. Yeah, he. I mean, he, he doesn't die of an overdose, but that was very unlikely. You go in to talk to him, and like, I don't know, how often have you been checking up on him? Uh, you know, probably at least once a day, maybe twice a day, like morning, evening. You know, so a little bit of wet food in the morning, a little bit of wet food in the evening. Make sure his litter's clean. Okay, all right. You come in and he jumps off a shelf onto your face. Yeah. Um, so he's 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 sitting. He's got his like shirt pulled open, um, and he's yeah, like sitting on sure. the he's sitting on the the bench. And he's like leaned over with his hands on his legs, and he's like, like breathing really hard. Yeah. And he's like exceptionally sweaty. Like he soaked through his suit jacket. Yeah. Um, and he's just like rubbing his face. Yeah. Um, when you come in and he, he barely, like, he doesn't really, he kind of looks up, but, like, only as far as, like, your stomach and then back to the floor. And he's just, like, yeah. kind of huffing. I think this this works for me. Yeah. I say, oh, Mr. DeSoto, you look in distress. Your injuries must have been more severe than we expected. He looks up and he's like, no. No, I can't, I can't feel the wound at all. I just, I have pain in my chest. I, and he like just like he looks like sickly, like he's like kind of green. Yeah, and he's like are got you... like he, he's like really stubbly and like his his pupils are all dilated. Yeah, uh, is there something you require? <coughs> he's like I don't think, I don't think that the drugs are doing their job. Maybe if you give me more. Uh, yes. Well, I um... tried to operate the, but it's. Said something about access codes. I'm, I don't know. I think he's like rubbing his arms. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, 
I, I will I will look into it, M Mr. De Soto. We've entered the uh, the hailing range of Strophios, and it, it's time to provide the access codes. I, I, I sort of like hold up the devices. It kind of like just pushes the device away, and he's like, "I can't. I can't. My head is it's foggy. I, I can't think straight. I uh, I, th I think I need more. I think I need more medicine." Hmm. Very well, Mr. DeSoto. Let let me look at your dosage. Um, yeah, like you know, I'm I'm just like like sort of checking. Like, Stephen thinks that this guy has become addicted to morphine, and therefore Eric suspects a little bit. Um, I mean, like, Eric could tell he's sick. Like he looks yeah, like a person yeah, who yeah. is sick. Yeah. Um. Like, is there a way I could give him a lower dose that would get him to stop feeling the effects of withdrawal to the point where he would be functional enough to to do the thing? Um. Hmm. <laughs> it's not so much that he can't. It's just he doesn't want to. He just wants you to give him more morphine. <laughs> Right, yeah, but so okay, so like my what I feel here is like he just wants more more morphine. He wants more drugs, yeah. And, and if I give, give it to him, him he's probably going to be cooperative. Sure, but the the danger here is going to be that if you give him drugs, he might he might just be like, uh, the codes are banana turbo lift." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Underpants. Yep. But no one know, would ever guess those. Which is the case. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, let me look at let me actually look at my character sheet here. Mm, persuade minus 1. Mm. Culture, Hoveda. Mm, I don't think that's really drug useful was, culture. I was say mm -hmm. mor morphine, morphine addicts on Hoveda. It's a whole other situation. History, bureaucracy. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm. A, you know, I'm gonna just be like, Mr. DeSoto, I need you to fill out these forms in order to authorize more morphine. So I'm trying to use my bureaucracy to work with me here, Adam. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You tell me what your character is doing. And we can figure it out. What would Eric want to do? God, shit. Like, um, I think uh, mm. I, I, I say, um, you know, I say to, to Mr. DeSoto, I say, M Mr. DeSoto, we're, we're being hailed at the moment. We need the codes. If you're in pain, I can give you a very little bit just to reduce the pain, enough for you to input the codes. And so then he, I can, I can give you like, the maximum he's, dose after. He stopped listening as soon as you said you were going to give him more. Like, he's just nodding. He's like, yeah. Yes, I think I think that's uh, the best that's the best idea. Yeah, so I give him like a quarter dose or something like that, okay. just enough to like take the edge off. So you go to you go to give him the like initial uh, you go to give him the needle, and you notice that like he's actually got um, like wounds or like scars in his arms, but they're old. They're really old. Yeah, right? like, you didn't notice them the first time, but they've like cool. healed. Yeah, uh, so a long totally. time ago. Yep. Um. And uh, yeah, he just like puts his arm out. And you can see him like squeezing his hand, like he's yep. done this before. Yeah, he's, yeah, like, yeah. Like waiting for you and kind of like looking at it with like hungry eyes. Yeah. Um, so pure, is he, Adam? And uh, yeah, and you you hey, put the drugs are normal. Drugs are fine. Drugs are you know natural human things. Um, God. Uh, that sounds like something an addict would say, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're not. They're not. That sounds as excited is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> okay. Like so you, I, um, you want to no, give him I, a I, little bit. You know, I like I want to get through to him, right? I want to I want to make sure, sure he understands. Like I don't think he's quite gotten the idea yet. And now that I'm seeing like the track marks on his arm, I think I like grab his arm and like I I expend a little bit of psionic power just to like make it feel like he's just being like compressed a little bit all around just to sort of sure. impress on him and be like Mr. DeSoto I need you in functional state I will give you a little bit to ease the pain and then once I have the codes I will give you the rest and like you know okay. eye to eye you make get a, your thrones um, when I get my codes make a, make a persuade check you can um, what, what psychic power do you want to use uh, I mean you know like What's the one where you have like eighteen strength or whatever? That's that's the second level. Yeah. Okay. Because I was gonna say, if you want to use like your strength, your physical presence, your psychic physical presence to intimidate, yeah. you can just use the bonus from that instead. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Telekinetic press. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Increases his level, but not his district control. So he's just like pushed back into the wall. Um, yeah. And maybe like 
Yeah, like you can see he's having trouble breathing because you're basically just like force pushing him up against the wall. And he's just like, <gasps> like trying to breathe because yeah, his so lungs are being compressed. Yeah, so that's a plus two for my psychic strength. Okay. Um, maybe we see, maybe we see like his, um, uh, like you can hear his, like the toes of his shoes, like clicking on the floor. Cause you've lifted him like up. So he's like yeah. eye to eye with you, but yeah. he's a lot shorter than you. So he's like being pressed against the wall by your psychic hand. And he's like feet are like ticking on the floor. He's like grabbing at his chest, trying to breathe. Yeah. Um, okay. So make your, uh, make a persuade, I guess. Cause there's no specific intimidate skill. So yeah. So um, persuade and persuade. you can use your strength bonus. Okay. Uh, oops. Yep. So, um, I'll use no attribute bonus and then I'll give myself a plus two for the strength that I have. Yeah. 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 Assisted plus two. Okay, cool. You look shit. at that shit. Ah, uh, right. you, you find his lack of faith disturbing. Yep. Totally. Um, he, yeah, he's just, he just like, is like shaking his head and like, you can see that he he's like yeah he's just, he's giving in he's like okay okay whatever and it's now like you've managed to be as frightening to him as the idea of not doing more drugs yeah. so he's just like yep just give me enough to get me back in the situation and yep yep cool yeah so you know i stick him you know quarter dose or you know however okay, much do you, i think do you like gonna... do you drop him for, like on the floor or do you like let yeah. him down or okay. i mean like I, I i let him down gently i've still got like my hand on his arm i've got the needle and you know, okay. I'm, so like, you, you and well, you you let him down, and as soon as you're not holding him up, he just kind of like falls, like he slumps. just kind of crumples. I, I control. He, he okay, so he he like falls onto you, and then immediately just like throws up, like on yeah. your legs. Yeah, um, uh. it's mostly like water and whatever he like <laughs> nutrient stuff he had for breakfast. Yeah, uh, and it's just like you have the the stink of bile just like splash onto your legs, and he's just like gasping and like spitting. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, like uh, Eric, he, like, I think his face betrays his impatience, but he's still kind of a big teddy bear. So you know, like, he's impatient. Well, I'm wondering. But, I guess, yeah, I'm wondering about how Eric is. Like, are you, are you empathizing with him, or are you just like impatient because you're like, oh god, he's like making his take forever. It's like it's what, I want to know than that. This actually goes back to like his experiences on on um, cigarette. Okay. And like the display of physical weakness and like sure. maybe maybe like it used to be that Eric was in his position like after like training like combat training or stuff like that and it, you know like the the cultural expectation that you're just going to like man up and you're going to go as hard as you can um right. and like even when you go 110% you're not going to puke because you still got more in you. And like Eric hated being treated with that disdain when he was on the other side, mm -hmm. but he has no way of avoiding that disdain now that the situation is reversed, right? So he's like, you know, sure. he's, he, to, just sort of, he just sort of like grabs the guy by the front of the chest. So have you, have, you, have, have you done this before? Have you like psychically like intimidated someone with your mind strength? Um, I feel like that would have been a part of my training Okay. on Haveda. Like I think I, Eric is no stranger to using his psychic powers to get what he wants. Right. It's your psychic Krav Maga. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So now he's just kind of like weak and pale and limp. Like he was weak before, but now he's like paying attention to you. Yeah. And so you I, like I, sit him down. I pick him up. I sit him on the edge of the bed. Right, so he's I, like, like, he like tries to like, a little bit. tries to like wipe his face and he like slap I, I hand him a towel, hands. you know. Yeah. Okay. And then All I right. say, hold still and, you know, stick him, pump the, you know, However hit the go much. button. Yeah, like, exactly. Turn the knob and hit the button. Okay. Yeah. And you can see his eyes like roll back a little and he takes like a, a deep kind of shuddering breath. Yeah. And then just kind of like goes a different sort of limp. He's less shaky and panicky and more just yeah. like. <sighs> yeah. So I, I, That's you know, Thank you. I pull the needle out and then I, I hold up the devices. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to make a mental save uh, for him. Okay. Uh, he needs I remind him. I remind him. The rest is coming once. Sure. You, yeah. Okay. So he, it, it's gonna take some time. Like he's not. It's not yeah. even. It's like just a combination of like, he's in a bad space, and you just kind of like fuck with him. But eventually, like, you know, he, he's trying to cooperate, and it, it takes him a couple of tries. Like he'll start and then stop and start and stop. Yeah. But eventually, you get the the wave files 
of his code. You get mm -hmm. a scan of his like thumbprint and his retina. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that like, do you do you give him the the morphine like you promised? Yeah, I give him up to exactly the dose he's been receiving. Okay, All right. no more. Okay, um, not not like on top. I give him the other three quarters of the dose. Sure. Okay, so you um, you give him the rest of the dose, and as he's kind of like going into like stoned mode he yeah. sort of like slumps back he's still got his own like barf all over the front of him he doesn't give yeah. a shit now though uh, and he, he just nods and he's like I haven't been to Strophius in such a long time it's very beautiful there you know and he like yes. kind of like, like nods his head and like he's doing that thing where he's kind of like out of it and like and you can see like his head dips forward and this like long string of drool just kind of like falls yeah. to the floor yeah and um he, I, I lie him down and turn him on his side. Um, okay. You know, I pat him on the back. I say, I haven't been to Strophios in a very long time either, my friend. And then I, you know, I, I, like, I watch him do the sort of like fade out thing, make sure he's mm -hmm. on his side, breathing fine. If he's going to puke, it's not going to choke him. Mm -hmm. And then I leave. Okay. All right. So the door hisses shut behind you. Yeah. Uh, um, and maybe, I, I go over. I go over the comms, and I say, um, "I say, Miss Peak, we need to keep a. Uh, we we we'll need to keep an eye on Mister Desoto. I didn't realize he was an addict. I didn't realize either, but we will. Good." Okay, so before before we before we go to break, I want to see like what is what does Eric's face look like? Like, are you just like back to smiles, or are you still like kind of like do you look concerned? What, no, is, what is, do we see on Eric's face before you walk away? This is you know like he's he's a little bit um, he's not down, but he's serious, um, yeah. and I think like internally he wishes there were a way he could help this guy overcome or you know remove himself from the situation that you know. Eric didn't mean to put him back into a relapse or anything like that. That's, you know, Eric knows that's some serious shit. But also, we need this man. We're using him for a purpose. And then he's going to be gone from our lives. All right. Cool. So, uh, yeah. A euphemism. Mm. For he, had, he has become the drug. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Turns out all along, the purity was you. <coughs> All right. Whoa! Should we, should we take Jeff, Should we take a break here? Jeff, you know what though? What? There's not a, not enough drugs in this world for the phantom pain, Jeff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How do you even slay the phantom pain, man? You can't. Oh my god! You can't. <laughs> it's unslayable. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it, Jeff. I love it when you laugh at a joke like you're Muttley from Wacky Races. It's like my best. <laughs> this is the best Jeff laugh. <laughs> I got a wheezy laugh, man. I'm, I, I think when I become old, it'll be a young child's laugh. That's what will happen. <laughs> there you go. All right, we'll take this final break. We'll come back and go into the fourth and final hour here of Roleplay Swan Song, week 32. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Is it 30? Whatever. We'll be right back. 